Well, folks, we wanted it and we got it. We certainly got the 2020 NFL draft that we've been craving since free and since free agency kind of slowed down. That's right. This is the BKBK podcast, and we're going to thoroughly unpack, right, Brian? That's right. Unpack this entire draft of the New York Jets. I'm your host, Brandon Phillips, and we're here with fellow co-host Brian Taylor, you. Captain Kyle McKenna, and Kerry, movie star Idris oh, Taylor. Gosh. This <laughs> is the show with sports and the culture. I don't have a haircut. And the New York <laughs> Jets reign supreme. Bro, you're a naturally just good looking dude. Hey, listen. Character actor. The fans right said now. it. The fans said it. They said that you have movie star good looks. They didn't say that about any of us. They said it was you. That was Kyle's mother. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, Come on. The she fans. Counts. She counts. The, fans. the fan. The fan. Hey, listen. Let's not act like we only have one fan. We've got, uh, you know, I'm going to be modest. We have hundreds of fans growing into the thousands. So uh, let's keep chopping wood over here. That's right. Uh, that's right. Let's go. Yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah. Shiana would say. <laughs> well, first and foremost, guys. Yes. Is everyone rested up? Because Team BKBK's last broadcast was what four <laughs> hours? Yeah, that's, that's a record for us. That's the it's longest a marathon. Broadcast. It is. Yes, it is a marathon. You know what, Kyle? It's not a marathon. It should have been a telethon. Okay, yeah, no, a telethon. <laughs> yeah, totally, man. And I was this well, close to asking for the best nation in the world. You know that? what that is? What's that? What's that? Doe Nation. <laughs> <laughs> Since it's a telethon, <laughs> should have got a donation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to help really? finance this thing. But hey, what are you gonna do? Man? Yeah, right? that was that was a dad joke. You know what I mean? That was totally all good. Yeah, that was that was a dad joke. And they a did a good job. They did there. a good job on the telecast of um of of everything. Quite frankly, I mean, we we kind of said it before. Like the it went extremely well compared yeah. to how it could have gone absolutely they got they got like, like the charitable thing going on they had some you know some artists get on and play some songs and everything and i mean let's face it if if you're not as into the draft as some of us are it's a boring proposition however it doesn't there's no competition going on so um it's all about um you know what the the potential of the peck is and everything like that like and there was my wife was even watching the draft, which she never does. And uh, and my son came in. He goes, "Wow, this is actually really interesting." You know, like all their different stories. Um, so I was kind of that was a kind of a proud papa moment. Um, but uh, the, the the draft went really well, and I think that you know it was like a telethon, but everybody was glued to their seat pretty much the whole time. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, we're going to kind of unpack this, Brian's favorite term, as I was saying, and let's really see how well this draft went, especially for what? The New York Jets. Um, so let's just jump right into it, okay? Yeah. All righty. Even though we still may be tired, but hey, man, we're resilient people, right? Jets fans are just <laughs> automatically resilient, all righty? Resilient which... tribe of people. Yes, <laughs> yes. We, we kind of have to be, don't we? Kind of have to be. Hey man, we're like the thirteenth tribe. Okay, <laughs> I'm on. I'm over here in Seattle. I'm on the diaspora. You are Jet fans right now. <laughs> yes, there are no Jet fans in Seattle. <laughs> not even no, one. You. This is not. This is not true. I have. I have a Jet fan friend on in the town that I live in, and really? his son is the fan too. So there's wow. three of us on Mercer Island. Mm. Wow! Wow! Now, are they transplants from New York, or they just happen Jer- to be- Jer- Jersey? Jersey, <laughs> Jersey. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. That yeah. part of the, the diaspora. Thing, you know, like like uh, in New York. First of all, there's a lot of Dallas Cowboys fans in New York, which really just bothers me. Well, that's, like, e- that's everywhere. That's They're the entire everywhere. country, Absolutely. as far as yeah. Dallas is concerned. Yeah. Steelers too. But Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers. I was just about to say that yeah. Steelers too. Front, front runners. They're oh all yeah. Runners. yeah, 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 yeah. From like the eighties and if they're true. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Well some of some of the some of the Steeler fans, I know a few Steeler fans that it's like their first experience with football was right around the time of those great Steeler teams. Sure. Yeah. So right. some sometimes sometimes the, the shiny object that was on the T V when you first fell in love with it is the one that you went to. So um 
the cowboy fans, I think there's that star is very appealing, especially when you're little. You know, Do you the, know what? Or Thanksgiving that, Day games and stuff right. like that too. Yeah. That leads me to believe the only way that that will happen for us, it already happened already, and it happened to an older generation because we were the first ones to win as an AFC team to win the Super Bowl, Super Bowl three, and I uh-huh. think that's when we started to generate like real fans. But it's been like fifty years, so they're kind of like growing old on us. So we need to kind of start winning again and 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 capture the nation. Well, you know, well, I mean, like you, like Brandon, you, Brandon had the bicycle. Um, the I had bike. the, yep. the I had the dad who was a, a rabid Jets fan and completely had a meltdown in nineteen eighty two and was never the same afterwards. Um, so it was like, I kind of took over the, the fandom. The from meltdown? I mean, he's a Jets fan, <laughs> but no, he, he completely melted down in the AFC championship in 82 when Richard Todd lost the game. Um, mm. and, uh, like he had to take a time out, you know, like I, I need to be alone right now kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, we were actually staying in Florida and, uh, and he, and I remember him having to take a walk. Um, and, and me saying, mommy, what's wrong with daddy? You know, like, like I've seen myself in the future, you know, like, you know, get mad at, at, at certain things like the button <laughs> fumble and stuff like that. Um, but we're still here, but that's not what we're here to talk about. That's right. Is it? Yeah. Good, good. So, you know what? Let's press on and let's talk about what we really came here to talk about. Let's do it. And that is the 2020 NFL draft and uh, the New York Jets, right? The Jets in round one. Okay. Well, first of all, everyone, let me just let you all know two episodes ago. um, If you want to check it out on YouTube, it's episode 302, by the way, uh, we team BKBK had a mock draft. And what we're going to do is basically just, uh, just reveal once again, what our mock draft is and compare and contrast that with what Joe Douglas the general manager of the New York Jets did as far as the actual draft and just basically see if, you know, we kind of agree where we agree and where we disagree because things will be different, but, you know, hopefully it's on the same line. And then uh, we'll just talk about, you know, what the differences are, the philosophical differences or the fundamental differences are with how we approached it versus what, how Joe Douglas of the Jets approached. And then we'll just chop it up like that. Sound fair? Sure. Yes, it does. Let's go. All righty. So round one. Okay, round one. If we bring up our mock draft at pick number 11, we had a consensus, you know, after a little bit of argumentation and debate, because I know that I had a preference. um, But we all agreed that Andrew Thomas, offensive tackle of the University of Georgia, should be the pick at pick number 11 for the New York Jets if he was available. Now, he was not available. But they were, you know, they called the top four. Um, and uh, uh, Tristan Wirfs was available. And for all of us here, I believe that he was the number one ranked offensive tackle. You know, I think it was a unanimous decision for all four of us. He was available at 11. And unanimously, our least favorite, not to say that we didn't think he was a good player, but our least favorite out of the big four was Makai Becton. And uh, out of Louisville, and the Jets ended up picking Makai Becton. So, what are our thoughts or, and, and, and your opinions about that? Well, let me say this. Um, first of all, our pick wasn't available because he went number one. Who was our pick? In terms of the in, in terms of the mock draft, it was Andrew Thomas. Right. 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 Yeah. So he yep. so Andrew Thomas went number four to the Giants. Um, yep. So our, with regard to our mock, if Werps was there in our mock, I think we would have picked Werps. Oh yeah, we just mock. snatched him up quickly. But I would say that. Um, now in this actual draft, Werps was available, but the Jets chose to to pick um, Beckton. Mekhi Becton. Yeah. Now, let's be clear. Werps at best in this draft would have went third to us. So he wasn't ranked as high on the Jets radar or um, Cleveland's radar. So 
my point is, is that Joe Thomas went with, excuse me, Joe Douglas went with who he felt was the better um, option there. Sure. Although I would have, and I think we're, we're all in um, agreement, we would have picked worse. I think, am I right in saying that? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. Um, Makai Becton, to many pundits, was the better choice over Wurfs. So if, if, we, if my, my, my opinion is that if, if he was getting killed, um, you know, in the media, in, in, the, in the sports media about picking that pick, then I would have had a different opinion about it. I like, don't get me wrong, I like Becton. I like what I like the possibilities that he presents at the left tackle position. Same here. Um, so, yeah, was I not in agreement with with picking Becton over Worfs? Correct, but I'm not going to lambaste the general manager for doing so. Yeah, and, I, and I'm still happy with the pick. I would say this. Um, I mean, again, hands down, we were going to go with Worfs, right? If if we were picking there. I think Correct. that Correct. Be- Becton had the biggest upside of any of the four offensive tackles, yeah. but also had the the bust potential out of all four tackles. So and we've been saying that from from day one, yeah, in the beginning, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. So so we'll see. He's first of all, he's selected an offensive tackle, right? If this was a GM in the past, he, he might have been a defensive tackle, but you know that's neither <laughs> neither here nor there. So and it, he selected a left tackle. Yes, and he selected a left tackle, um, somebody that could protect protect. Uh, Darnold's blind side for 12, 15 years. Uh, hopefully that will be the case. He's a huge man, a mountain of a man. Um, will help in the run game immediately uh, as well. So, you know, let's see what, what ends up happening. I mean, I, I think it was a, it was a good pick. Um, I, I wouldn't have gone in that direction. We felt like the draft broke as best as, as we it possibly could have at that point. We had all the wide yeah. receivers. If he wanted to go that direction, we had two of the four top offensive tackles at that point as well to select from. And Wirfs was somebody that was high on all four of our lists. Um, so yeah. he just went in a different direction. But I, I don't think we're going to go into training camp thinking that, um, you know, we haven't improved the offensive line as a whole with that yeah. selection. Yeah, I, I think that um, I think that you bring up a really good point, uh, Brian. That um, we were aligned, and I, this is kind of going to be the way that I go through this whole draft. I'm I'm just telling you right now, um, we were aligned with what we thought the pick should be with the Jets front office. So we thought offensive tackle. They also thought offensive tackle, and the only difference was. They had a guy on their board higher than we did. Um, they also had the opportunity to interview all four of those guys and talk to them and see how they fit into their culture and stuff like that. Um, so a couple of things at their, at their disposal that we didn't have. However, I still think that Makai Becton has the, the highest bust potential out of the four, yes. um, but he also has a tremendous upside. So um, I agree with you that, Either way, the Jets picked what – we wanted the Jets to pick an offensive tackle. Uh, we mocked an offensive tackle. They picked an offensive tackle. So yes. um, you can't be that mad at the pick. Um, you can only really just say, you know, um, they like Coke, we like Pepsi. Right, right. Uh, right. In a lot of ways. Um, and I think that that's going to be a pattern – as we go through these draft picks, that there's going to be a lot of the Pepsi challenge up in this piece um, where there's preferences rather than bad decisions. I, I agree with you, Kyle. And, and if I may, um, you know, this is conjecture right here, but uh, well, I wouldn't even say it was conjecture. It's kind of like a, you know, a, a point of view from, you know, from, from analyzing it somewhat. From my perspective, it seems to me that the Jets were married on getting an offensive tackle, right? Now, the two purest offensive tackles out of the big four were Andrew Thomas and Makai Becton. Uh, th- they're talking about Tristan. Now, now I think Tristan was the best, uh, Tristan Worst was the best offensive lineman because of his athleticism. 
yeah. I think that um, that uh, uh, um, uh, Jedrick Wills was the best right tackle. But I think they wanted to get not even just an offensive tackle, but an, uh, a left tackle specifically. And since Andrew Thomas was taken by the Giants, who, in my opinion, was the best left tackle, Tris being the, I'm sorry, Worfs being the best offensive lineman, and uh, Jedrick uh, Wills being the best right tackle, they wanted to go with the best left tackle because they specifically uh, uh, wanted that and, and looked at that position on the Jets as a building block and as a weakness. So I think that is why they took uh, um, uh, Makai Becton, especially with his extremely high ceiling, if you know he ends up being what the Jets are hoping that he will be, and which I believe he can be. I, I'm, I was still disappointed when it happened because I, I, I felt like Tristan Wurst was still the best one. But I feel like I understand where they are coming from, you know, as far as making sure that they get the best left tackle available and they're still picking out of the top four. So each four of them each have different values. One's the best all around lineman. One's the best left tackle. One's the best right tackle. And then you have just giant behemoth of a man who is as it is right now, the second best left tackle, but has the potential to explode and be the best left tackle. So I'm seeing that perspective now. I, I, would, would everybody agree in hindsight, now seeing how the draft went and having done as many 100,000 mocks as we did, <laughs> that, that a big part of the draft is, 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 um, is feeling the flow of it. If we had not picked an offensive tackle with that first pick, we would have not gotten an offensive tackle that we would be that stoked about because there were offensive tackles that got picked in the first round that were projected as maybe even second or third round. Um, so I think that I think that they had to go in that direction. I, I, I'm really happy that they didn't pick a receiver with that pick because I don't think that we would have gotten what we needed later on from the offensive tackle position. I, I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Austin yeah. Jackson, yeah. IJ, Isaiah Wilson. Um, Josh Jones. Josh Jones. But Josh Jones didn't go until the second third. round, 72. Oh, 72. Third round, sorry. Third, yeah. Not third round? 72 third As, round. Right? Third round. Ezra Cleveland, yeah. um, he he didn't last very long either. Um, second uh, round, Matt Pert, 58. Matt Pert. Um, to the Giants, right? Yep, he went to the Giants. Yep. Not my favorite pick. You know, he's more of a developmental pick. But yeah, but would, a, would any of us wanted any of those guys, you know, as a second, as a second round pick? Not, not, no, not no. hurt. No, no. I, I think my only, um, and we probably wouldn't have broke this way anyway, was Trent Williams, uh, and what that trade uh, ended oh, up turning yeah. out to be. Right. Now he turned down a trade to Minnesota. So they right. say because so they, because he's denying that he's denying oh, he that now? he turned it down. Okay, all right. So, but who knows? But who knows? But he the Jets up... the Jets aren't mentioned in any of those in any yeah, of those dude. teams that the negotiations were talking about. I didn't see the Jets mentioned in any. Right. Yeah, but I, I but I think a part of that the fact that I think a part of that one of the factors I'm sure is would have been money and signing this guy long term. You know, with what you have now, you have what you consider your bookend left tackle. You have your right tackle um, who, who would have been your left tackle, but because you drafted your, your uh, left tackle, he, that slots him over. Um, and you still have sign, you still have flexibility with regard to who you might want to sign um, long term or even in the short term. So, you know, I think that that had to factor into the decision making process of even making that offer of a five, of a fifth and a third next year. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm, I, you know, I'm sure after the draft, all four of us and we were, you know, uh, uh, conversing back and forth through text and everything. Uh, we were looking at other columnists and sports writers and analysts giving their own grades of this first round pick of the New York Jets. And there's a general consensus. I didn't see anything lower than a B plus. It's been like yeah. A minuses as far as, you know, uh, Makai Becton. Yep. And um, I agree with it. The only thing that I would have given an A plus to is if we got Tristan Wirfs, you know? So, listen, 
I'm but happy I guarantee with, you I'm happy with the people, A minus, man. Like thoroughly happy. I guarantee you those same people would have been saying, why wouldn't you pick Becton when he's on the board instead of picking worse, who yeah. is not necessarily graded out as a as 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 a better prospect at left tackle. Yeah. My opinion is that um Wirfs will end up being an all pro right or left guard and a pro bowl right tackle. Well, he did predominantly play left tackle at the University of Iowa. Right. So I, I understand think, that. Yes. I, I, I'm just saying that I have the belief. I think he can play any position on that line, maybe except for center and be a pro bowl caliber player. And he's got more experience at uh, left tackle. Um, and I think he can play just as well and be a little bit more athletic and kind of one of those tackles that are on the move. But Hey, like I said, that would have been, that's an A plus to me. We got an A minus in my opinion with Makai Becton. And I'm thoroughly happy with that. We have an anchor. We have a foundational piece. And you know what? When when uh, Joe Douglas called up um, Becton and let him know that they were going to draft him and he started kind of getting emotional and crying, you know what he said to our general manager? He said, and, and he said to the coach as well, he was like, Coach, nobody's touching him. Don't worry about it. Nobody's touching him. And I heard that and I was like, I love it. I love it. I mean, like he's saying this right yeah, now, and yeah, he's like, right. nobody's touching him. Yeah, right. That's the kind of player that I want to to embrace his position, his left tackle position, and his job and his duty of just protecting our franchise. And he said, Coach, nobody's t-. and he's doing this through tears. He's like, nobody's touching him. Nobody's touching him. I can't wait to meet everybody. I can't make I can't wait to meet my quarterback. And I'm listening to this. Yeah, right. And I'm you like, got, this, you gotta know so Joe Douglas loves that. Joe Douglas yeah, is did you, loving that. Did, did you hear about him shouting out the punter on Twitter? Uh, I bet he did. Nah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a whole thing about um he was trying to he he's he, like he turned into like I'm a Jet now, so I'm looking at the Jets draft from here on out. And he wow. shouted out the, the punter from Texas A&M, which is – You know I love people like that, that, man. You know I love it. So, you know what? That A- minus might have just jumped up to a straight-up A real quick for me, man. I love it, well, let me Well, let me point out something to you. Yeah. It's very similar to, to the feelings that we had about Quinn and Williams after we found out about his personality. You know, besides, you know, taking sure. runs at airports and stuff like that. Sure. that oh, you got to mention that. That, right? that, that will litigate itself. <laughs> um, but um, we'll find out that, that yes. the courts deal with that. But yes. but Quinn and Williams, the, the person, is an amazing dude. And it yeah. sounds like this Makai Becton is an amazing dude. And it sounds like they will fight in training camp. And then uh-huh. they'll go have a, a huge buffet some, dinner. Some flapjacks um, or something, right? You know, that, flapjacks. Like, like one, one of those one of those buffets that that if they say you pay by the pound, they walk out. If Fun. they say it's all you can eat, <laughs> then they stay. Um, right. Like uh, Mana's in uh, Harlem is a pay by the pound. You got to be real careful. Oh, don't, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. load up on, oh, on, no. on mashed potatoes. Let, let me and find rice. out, Kyle. Uh, you know about Manners. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, I, lived, I, lived, I lived down the block from the infamous Pan Pan. I don't know if you've ever oh, been to Pan Pan. Wow. Uh, I've uh, never been there. And, uh, wow. It was 125th Street, uh, 135th Street. Um, yeah, they used to have the bacon, egg, and bologna sandwich. Uh, the the bologna egg and cheese. Wow, on the English muffin. Nice. They better throw some seasoning I, on that. I digress, room. but I, yeah. I think that um I think that Brandon is onto something there with um with the 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 type of personality that 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 are, is in our rooms now. You know, um, that's 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 big. That's yeah. really really big, and uh, it's, it's it's a good thing. Yeah, to speak to that, one of the um, draft pundits that I saw um, put together that we have six. Maybe it was six um, team captains out of our yeah. draft picks. Yeah, R- yes. Rich Samini was saying that on Twitter. Right. We, we picked like six in a row. Right? Yeah. So we're talking about character, and, and some of that played into, obviously, who they selected as well. You know, that's another right. piece speaking to what you're saying, Kyle, that we weren't privy to was, you know, just character and stuff like that. We were just looking at on-the-field performance as far as decision-making yeah. and who we were drafting and where. But obviously they had that additional component wanting people that had good character and were leaders to add to the team. And culture, you know, I, you got you got to build good culture. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
And I love it that it was a concerted effort by our new GM. So yeah. it just shows you something about his character as well and how he values a higher character. You know, everyone makes mistakes, right? But overall, it seems like he wants leaders on the team. And, um, you know, I got to give him a thumbs up for that. So, fellas, let's move on to round two, pick yeah, number 48. Yeah. So much to unpack about this one. Let's uh-huh. go. Pick number 48. Mm-hmm. All right. So, in our mock draft, Team BKBK's mock draft with pick number 48. Mm-hmm. If you guys mm-hmm. remember from an uh, uh, episode <laughs> ago or two episodes ago, we picked as a team LaVisca Chenault, wide receiver out of Colorado. That's a good enunciation, at- man. You know, I like that. It's not bad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Better than some of my Nigerian pronunci- pronunciations. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good at Way all. Go. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, so we picked him. And then what actually happened, what the New York Jets picked, as we uh, well know, now it wasn't at pick number 48. Uh, Joe Douglas, uh, he traded down to pick number 59, acquired uh, an, an extra pick. I believe it was pick number 117, mm-hmm. which is in the fourth round, I believe. And uh, we waited, we waited, we waited. And we still got a receiver because all four of us, we wanted a receiver it, and correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. We thought that once we protected Sam Donald, now we got to give Sam a weapon. And uh, I know uh, Brian, you can jump in right here because you were talking <laughs> about this receiver that we picked, <laughs> Was I? you know, from, from the very beginning. And he was basically in all of our mocks and everything. He mm-hmm. continuously was going in the first round mm-hmm. and that guys and girls, our audience, that was Denzel Mims out of Baylor. And Brian's loving. He's got his hands up <laughs> like he's standing on the uh, on the precipice over there uh, in, 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 at the Olympics in the 1970s with the black glove on or something. That's right. That's right. <laughs> black fist in the air. Uh, listen, yes. you know, I, I, I saw Mims early on in the draft process and, you know, the dude was just super fast and he was kind of low profile until um, until the combine where he ran the four, three, eight, 40. Yeah. So combine that with the six three frame, the ability to go and get contested catches, um, you know, and, and just being a burner. So he can he can do the fly route, you know, um, you could do a post, you could do, you know, hitch and go and kind of take it to the house from from that perspective as well. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. he had the stats too, you know, receptions, yes, couple of uh years over a thousand yards receiving at Baylor. Um so I liked him early on. And then as the combine was over and he continuously was moving up draft boards until like the first round. I was like, no, because <laughs> before it was more like third round, maybe fourth, you can kind of get this guy, but he moved up to, into the first round. So when, you know, T Higgins went off the board um, and a couple other folks went off the board early in the second round, I'm like, man, this is going to be tough. Maybe we're not going to get him. Then he kept falling. Pittman Jr. went off the board early. Yeah, Pittman Jr. went off the board. Then, you know, it kept on going down, and we were almost at, what, 58 was our original pick? Uh, 48, 48 was 48. our original pick. 48. Yeah, 48. I was like, Mims! And then they traded, and I said, oh, no, no Mims. And then we had to wait a whole, <laughs> we had to wait an eternity, a whole Felt 11 like that, picks. right? And I just kept saying <laughs> Mims. Like, you guys were going back and forth in the text, and I was just like, Mims! <laughs> I gave up. Remember, I was going back and forth, and I was like, we're never going to get Mims. Yeah. And you just kept on going, Mims, Mims. Yeah. And I was like, we're never going to get him. Yeah, Brandon you was know? very, very positive during the draft. That's all. His text was very positive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I was like, right. Mims, right. so, Mims, so, Mims, so, Mims. And so we finally got him. So this, this is, you know, I felt really good about this. This is a potentially late first round draft pick talent and not only did we get the talent but we also got an additional draft pick as well so win-win by uh joe douglas absolutely i'll tell you what and i and and, and then i'll let kerry and kyle speak my bad guys um mm-hmm. just going through the rankings and everything and all these mock drafts he was mocked uh denzel mims to go basically the next receiver after jefferson and jefferson was the fourth ranked receiver yep so mims in general, was ranked as the fifth highest receiver. And to get him at 59, forget about it. Go ahead, fellas. That, that's exactly where I had him. He was like the top of my second tier. Um, and looking at uh, – there's, there's a bunch of things to unpack here. So we don't get him at 48. We get him at 59. We, we trade back. We make a successful – what I would consider a very successful trade back by the GM to acquire picks and still get – a guy that we would have felt very happy with at 48. Um, I don't think anybody would have been, you know, Chenault was, was gone at that point yep. anyway. Yep. So um, I think we would have been very happy with him at 48, but we get 
draft capital, and we can talk about how that capital was used later. That we might disagree on that. Right. But but getting Mims at fifty nine is a like Brian said, it's a total win win. Yes. Um. And looking at you know the explosiveness that he brings. First of all, he has to be a starting receiver for us. We, sure, we yeah. talked a lot about we talked a lot about um, how many starters are we going to get out of this draft. Right. How many starters are we going to get out of the first four rounds? We had a lot of picks in the first four rounds. Um, and I think that Becton is a, is a, a day one starter. Um, and Mims has to be a day one starter. Yep. They can't, they, he can not, he has to be healthy and he has to be starting. Um, so then our first two picks are check off the box, whether you want to give them an A or B or whatever, they, they serve the purpose of what we were trying to do. Um, just looking at his stats, I mean, this guy um, as a sophomore averaged nearly 18 yards a catch. Um, and then he was around 15 the next two years. But consistently um, catching balls, um, when you when you got high uh, yardage on your average, it means you got a lot of yards after catch too. Yep. Um, and he found the end zone. So, you know, 12 touchdowns his senior year. Um, pair him up with Perriman. Like, again, I think that Perriman is going to, he's on the other end of a breakout. He is not, um, he's not a a wide receiver three, in my opinion. Um, And Crowder is really good. So I think that Mims is a great choice here. um, And it's a great job by the GM. I agree. I think, I think the only criticism you could give is if somebody else was picked between um, our original 48 and 59 and the only one that was picked was um let's chase playpool and i would not have picked him that high i don't think he gives gives you the value that high and like we i think like like all of us have said this is a great pick as far as the ability that this um the ability and value that you get at 59 you know I think, um, but doesn't Chase Claypool like? Doesn't he fill a spef- specific type for the Steelers that they sure. haven't had for a while since Absolutely. Juju has been their their guy? Right. Um, he's yeah. like their Plaxico. He's like exactly he's like their new Plaxico. Yeah. Yeah. Or 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 uh, Bryant uh, Bartavius. What was the yes. guy's name? That. Uh, um, Mar- Martavius Bryant, and I think he came out yes, of Clemson. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a thinner frame, but the height is equitable. And um, Claypool is just a bigger, thicker version of that. And the forty time is probably very sim- similar. Now, uh, Van Jefferson I, went too. Uh, he went number fifty-seven. I don't think right. any of us had him on our draft board as somebody that we would have selected no. in the second round at all. I thought that was and high. Again, for that and again, that was a reach. Tier, that was a reach. That was a reach. That, was, that a reach. was a reach. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yep. yep. Uh, I'll tell you what, you know, because I after the draft, I was reading up on each one of our draft picks individually as individuals. And this is the tidbit that I read up on. And you guys may have already seen it. Um, so the thing that really made me feel – First of all, I felt comfortable when we got him, you know, as far as Mims is concerned. I had um, him as like my fifth ranked, you know, just like what Kyle was saying, as far as like you had a top tier and then he was like at the top or in the beginning of our second tier, still a first rounder, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, in in value as far as I'm concerned. But the thing that was holding him back, they were saying that he ran more simpler routes at Baylor. Absolutely. And when he went to that you know that week of the senior bowl where, where all these players gather around and that week of practicing and you have the entire nfl there like vetting each player they said that one he could still he, he could run the whole route tree even though he didn't show it um because of the system that he was in in baylor so he proved to them that that he could there and he had a great week of practice going against other top-notch dbs and cornerbacks in practice yep. so that just solidifies how comfortable I am, you know, uh, 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 um, drafting uh, Denzel Mims. I feel like he, like what Kyle was saying, he needs to start right away. And not only just start, I think he has basically proved to me thus far, you know, at this early point that he should be our number one receiver. And has to be. He has to be, exactly, Kyle. Yeah. Perriman will hopefully be our strong number two receiver. 
with Crowder in there filling in the gaps and taking the pressure off of those guys. Well, I would say this. Well, hold on. I think initially, game one, maybe that he's able to develop that because Perriman, how he finished last year, will allow him yeah. to kind of, you know, like a one and a one A, you know, from, from that perspective, right? So I, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to put that much pressure on him day one per mm -hmm. se, but I think throughout the 16 games next year, he'll grow into that. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and you have I'd Crowder, agree. too. Don't forget Crowder. Crowder's going to get probably more more touches than anybody else in, probably in, in, will. in the wide receiver court. Right. So he's yes. going to get the most touches anyway. So but as far as maybe yards and touchdowns, then maybe you, you're talking about the difference between Perriman and Mims being probably 50 50 between the two. I'll, tell, I'll put it to you this way, B. I think automatically there won't be as much pressure because. Look at our tight ends. We have Herndon and Griffin, who we all like a lot and who will take the pressure off. We have um, uh, Bell. Hopefully, Gase will just get him the ball, you know, throwing him the ball. We already know he's got great hands. We even called him basically, uh, what were we saying? He, he's the not the best a, slot in the league. The best slot in the league. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Thank you, Cap. You know, and then we have Crowder, right? And then I already said uh, Perriman. And then now you have a rookie, you know, with all this talent who can kind of learn at a normal pace, you know, at a complementary pace. And then once that start ha starts happening, he can kind of lean on his own skills and become that dominant force that we are foreseeing that he can be. And, you're, saying, uh, you're saying Crowder is the best slot in the league? No, no. no uh, Le'Veon Bell would be the best slot in the league if he yes, played slot. Yes, yes you're absolutely exactly. right. You're yeah, absolutely and, right. and you know what? Honestly, uh, Crowder, he's not too far behind. You know, he's not too far. I mean, he's got the potential to be uh, a top – five slot in the league, you know, but Hey, that's another convo, but that's how much confidence I have in them. And uh, yeah, man. So if you just look at our two tight ends, Le'Veon Bell, Crowder, Perriman, and now Denzel Mims, I mean, we got a little something now, you know, I mean, come on now, get him the ball, <laughs> Sam Donald, baby. O-line, hold them up, please. You know, and, and then the what, thing, what, what happens with Quincy and Unwin too, you know, that, that that to me is an icing on the cake thing. It's not a, a thing yeah. that we necessarily need to happen. Sure, right. um, he's not getting paid that much money. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of like a he's like a stash right now. So um, we'll but, see how that goes. We'll, 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 we'll move on to the next draft yeah. pick. Yep, let's stash him and hopefully that neck gets better. You know what I'm saying? Because he's let, let me let me let, well let me let me address this really quickly. I, think, ahead, I think a big part of and I think I I have in I just address this in the text chain is depth that we did not have um, in last year that caused us games. I think um, having a Nunwa as a two, having the possibility of Doxon um, developing, yep. um, Smith, Herndon, and Griffin, um, we can have, we have the makings of a wide receiver core that may not superly overwhelm you, but you have to cover, you have to make a decision about who you're going to cover. Don't sleep on Berrios. No, no, I'm, I'm not. I just didn't want to mention him because he wasn't a big part of the offense last year. I just think, I just think that Berrios, um, going back and looking at his college film, um, there's a reason why the Patriots picked him in the first place, and that was because – he had a lot of Julian Edelman type qualities mm -hmm. in college, and um, and they had to cut him really because they signed Antonio Brown. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and so I don't know if they ever really wanted to get rid of him as much as um, it was they, necessary. They had to. Necessary yeah. evil. Yeah. So um, just. We should keep that in mind because, like, they they were right on Amendola, um, with that, um, you know, like like that that was the same type of, of guy Amendola, um, and uh, and Gase, I think Gase had didn't Gase have Amendola for a minute? Yeah, in Miami, um, sure did. In Miami, yeah. um, yeah. So I would just say, uh, I know, I I know we're we're talking really really conjecture here, but Barrios. Not, not a bad player. Not a bad player at all. I and, think my, my, and, my, and our quarterback yeah. has weapons right yeah. now that can be utilized. Good. I think this is now going to fall in the hands of scheme. What? How are they going to scheme with these guys that are multidimensional talented? When you say scheme, you mean coaching, right? 
No, I, I said scheme. You you can bring that coaching up if you want to, <laughs> um, and it'll it, it'll end up it'll end up coming down to that. Yes, right. Because we did talk about scheme last year and what we didn't see that we wanted to see, right? So I would agree with you with that, but I want to see what the scheme is going to be, and if yes, our head coach is going to utilize the weapons that they drafted. I'm not going to get into the whole Gase thing. Let's not. Honestly, I do wish him well. I mean, I'm a Jets fan first and foremost. Yeah, you have to. You know, yeah, yeah. So, so you have to. So, I'll save that for another, another time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? Let's. I mean, the long, the, the long and the short of that is, if he doesn't produce, he's going to get fired. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, what, whether whether we feel he's had like a, a you know, a deck stack, a deck stacked against him or yeah. not, I mean, I think that's arguable. But you're either going to He's got another probably year, of, you know, to 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 prove that, and they'll they'll probably get rid of him. This is his judgment year. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, yeah, yeah. So, guys, That's let's, the NFL right now. Yes, sir. Um, just one thing about Burrios because I know that I've been critical of him, Kyle, and you and I've been going back and forth. I'm not critical of him as a receiver, but like I stated before, as a returner, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I just haven't. I just haven't seen him kind of you know get extra yards and kind of stand out in that regard so i'm not him yes burials i'm not happy i I think i've seen that i have not i've I've seen it like maybe once or twice i think i've seen that yeah go ahead but but you know that's something that that's 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 micro we want to still still remain macro round three it is guys so this is where we're going to have some uh oh yes round three yes all righty and, and I so, want the captain to start it off. Let's go. Yes. So let me announce it, and then captain, take it away. <laughs> well, 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 can I can I interject after you announce it? Just for a quick thing. After you announce yeah. it. After you announce uh-huh. it. Right. No, okay, no. sure, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Brian, it'll be you once I announce it real quick. So, round three with pick number 68. We still have pick 68, okay? Round three. This is our Team BKBK mock. We picked as a team, as a squad, Bradley and A, defensive end, Utah. Mm-hmm. Because we look at our squad in dire need of an edge rusher, mm-hmm. and then what happened uh, with the Jets? The Jets kind of went somewhere that we were not expected uh, expecting, and they Left. picked a safety slash cornerback out of Cal Ashton Davis. Yeah, and uh, just so that you guys uh, know, uh, in the mock that we did, I went back to the mock that we actually had. Um, Ashlyn Davis went number 56 in mm. our mock, mm. right? Just as, as a FYI, it, mm. he wasn't on any of our radars. Um, I don't know, again, Kyle, because you, you kind of had the safety conversation. And I'm sure you're going to dive into that. But as I was going down and actually going through, um, you know, the mock draft that we did and I saw it, I'm like, wait, isn't that Ashlyn Davis name? He went number 56 and we picked him 68. So Kyle, go. So there were three safeties that, um, that I thought were high grade round guys. And, and that was the guy that the Patriots picked. From you know, the one of them school. already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Xavier, Xavier McKinney from, uh, was he from Mississippi state? Uh, I, forget which McKinney, I think he's from, from Alabama or McKinney. And then Jeremy chin uh, and Ashton <laughs> Davis wasn't in that. Right. So McKinney went to the um, Giants. So, so the funny thing about this, about this whole thing is that um, Jeremy Chin was selected about four picks before this or three, right? So, um, um, yes. So I would, so I went out on a limb in the text chat, and, you know, on the, on the text stream and said, or oh, actually, no, it was on the broadcast that um, I'm pretty sure that if the, uh, were we on a broadcast then? That was, no, that was day two, right? Yeah, so it was tech stream. I think that we probably would have selected Jeremy Chin with that pick had he still been available if that's what we saw our priority as. Now, or if we saw it as a BPA type of thing. Because, um, I mean, if you're going to pick Ashton Davis at that pick, I mean, he also could have loved Ashton Davis. I think um, that's probably the case. Don't, don't you feel like they're different players, though, Kyle? I kind of feel like he's more – Free safety could be corner, could be slot corner versus 
you know, Chin, who's more could be, you know, more in the box safety, could be linebacker kind of direction. I mean, don't you feel like they're a little bit different? That's you know, my just, perspective well, my, too, Brian. My my just my, my yes, they're they're definitely they're definitely different players. There's a there's a special teams component that Aston Davis brings to it, the track speed, all that stuff. He's probably going to replace Berrios in that role. Um, Brandon, you know, that, that, that'll, they'll, they'll be battling for that. Um, but the, the thing with Chin is my, I've always contended that Chin is like Isaiah, uh, Wilson, not Isaiah Wilson, um, Isaiah Simmons, like he's like a, a poor man's version of Isaiah Simmons. So, uh, and I think Bart Scott said it on the ESPN radio commentary, uh, you know, you know, quoted, uh, He's Jeremy Chin with the cheaper price tag. Uh, uh, he's uh, Isaiah Simmons with a cheaper price tag. So, um, yeah, I would have loved for them to have a shot at that. But uh, I think it all surprised all of us that we picked the safety at this at this juncture. Right. Considering that we we all feel an edge uh, would have been um, more of a uh, an opportunity at that point. I think um, that. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think that uh, Joe Douglas got together with Greg Williams and, you know, uh, Greg Williams was like, I'm going to play this Batman and I need to make sure I bring my utility belt, you know, and that utility belt is Ashton Davis because he is like what Brian was alluding to before, you know, a Swiss army knife. He has, First of all, he's got that track speed. He's, a, he's just an athlete just in general. Secondly, he has history playing cornerback, playing deep safety, free safety, and he returns kicks as well. So that's four different components that he embodies. So he can be that utility belt, and he can be placed wherever. Also, if you look, I wonder what's going to be happening with our safeties, you know, as we're going through contract negotiations and things like that. Yep. Maybe he's right. thinking like that. I think that maybe that they would hold on, of course, to our all pro strong safety first, you know, if it comes between Marcus May and, and, and Jamal Adams, you know. So if that were ever in the discussion, we would have, uh, um, you know, our, our utility safety slash cornerback slash returner. And he can do all of these things and be placed anywhere and produce. However, I still don't like that pick because I feel like we should have addressed the edge more deliberately at pick number 68. Like, we need that. Is this guy a bad player? No, but I think that basically I would not have made that pick. I would say this. But oh, Go ahead. So I would say this. Bradley and Nay went the last pick of the fifth round. 179. Right. So, wow. so he, he was somebody that Kerry and I were definitely on board with. I still would have picked him. Um, and Brandon. And, okay, and Brandon. Sorry about that. So, um, but in this spot, I was looking at Josh Jones, to be honest with you, who was the offensive tackle for Houston. Mm -hmm. felt like when you talk yep. about BPA. Because he, he, because he dropped. Right. He dropped to 72. Right. So, he dropped to 72. So, although Ane was kind of in the forefront for three out of four of us, um, when you're talking about BPA and where Houston was uh, potentially, oh, Josh Jones, sorry, was potentially a late first round draft pick or early yep. second round draft pick. I thought I thought that could have been somebody we could have scooped up right then and there. And maybe those are our two, him and Becton end up as our two starting tackles. And we push the other ones back for depth at some point in time or let them just fight it out to see who ends up being um you know our tackles moving forward or whatever. Re so. remind me for a second whether jk dobbins was available at this point he was not he was not available he got picked before mims yeah he was gone yeah he got picked before mims uh by okay. baltimore dobbins was 55 mm. yep. yeah and mims was 59 right yeah right. yeah yep mm -hmm. so so i have several points with this yep what i have picked ashton davis was not on my on my radar at all so the argument is, so then why do you pick a safety at this position, at this, at this point? What I, you know, our, our draft was Bradley and A. He went 179. It is, it is not a, a coincidence that nobody else drafted him prior to that. 
right? So again, it's about what Value. Um, Kyle was saying in terms of we are not in the room and there was a consistency amongst other teams that did not pick him up at that position. So that addresses that. Um, what it also does is insulates us in the event that we decide to let go May. He is not in competition with Jamal Adams. Not at all. At all. They, they, they are two different types of safeties. He is what Jamal, he is what May should be doing. Um, he projects as a safety that does what, what May should be doing or should have been doing during the time that he's been tenured as a Jet. Um, this guy flies to the ball. He's got exceptional speed. He's a ball hog. He catches it. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm, that's I'm important. not. This is, <laughs> that's this important. Is, this is totally this, again. Can't be undervalued. Is, is not, you got to catch right. the ball when the opportunity comes your way. This is not to diminish what May is because no. I love I love May. May corrects mistakes that the cornerbacks make, and that's why he's always in the frame. And you think that he's the cause of the problem well, when he's the one that's trying to erase it. Well, listen. More important than that, availability. He's been right. injured. And he's been injured. He's been, injured. been injured. So if you if you put one thing, it's just availability. The dude has been injured um multiple seasons. So from that perspective, you gotta hedge and find somebody that can be your center fielder, potentially, in the event that he's hurt again. Or if you decide I'm gonna pay and and back the truck up for Adams, I can't pay both of them. And they both came in the same year. So what are you gonna do? You're making <laughs> you my point. you're making you my get point. Get rid of May. <laughs> you're you're make, you're making my point. Thank you very much. And again, this is about chess pieces, about how you're moving these guys around and what you can do as a result. If this happens, you've got a contingency plan for if this happens. And in the event that you have somebody that goes down because of injury, you have somebody that can step right in. Again, about the depth of this team, um, this was addressed at every, every time we drafted, we drafted for that purpose, it seems like to me. And if there was a caption that we could put on the draft, it definitely would have been depth. Um, and this and this accomplishes that goal. I, I liken him to a past New York football player, Jason Seahorn, in terms of how he um, mm. is being viewed. Um, world-class speed, a walk-along type of guy, lunch pail. Yep. You know, I'm gonna prove you wrong. You know, this guy walked on the track team as a as a hurdler and walked on the football team and earned a scholarship. And was, is was now it, was, a, go ahead. Wasn't Seahorn's career like five years? It was, but it was based on injury. It was more so an okay. injury than it was. He had a he had a terrible injury. I think it was his mm. either his hip or his knee. Okay. Yeah, I knew right? I knew he wasn't around that long. No, that's, he that's, he, that's he wasn't. Happened. But what I'm talking about when he was, he yeah. was I mean, you, you, we all know that this guy was a great, was a great athlete. He was good. He was very, very right? good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I see in this pick. Did I want him? Was he on my radar? Was he on my radar? Absolutely not. Would I have picked someone else? I would have picked Lynn Bolden Lynn, at that, at that position, who was actually picked right after him. Right. Yeah. Right. Actually, uh, actually, he was picked after our second, third round pick. All right. He was picked after Zaniga. Yes. That's right. Correct. Um, guys, just re real quick before, we, just to to talk about some of the things that Kerry was saying too. Um, the Bradley and A ran a four nine. Um, I know. I think that's why Kyle, McK Kyle McKenna ran a four eight three. <laughs> oh, here we um, go. In, here in, we in go. In nineteen ninety four. I hate and, you. And was and was and wasn't <laughs> even considered, uh, you know, as a hybrid player. You know, the hybrid player that I was. Um, you know what? I'll finally answer the question, Brian. I ran a five flat, so he only ran one tenth hey, faster man, than I did. You're beating Beckton, right? Did Beckton ran a five one? Yeah. I did beat Beckton. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At about a hundred, a hundred and fifty pounds less. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Wait a second. Why am I laughing? Wow. Coming out. Right. Stop laughing. Oh, stop laughing. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. funny. Not funny. Laughing. <laughs> well, I, I I I think I took a little weight off of there too. Um, but I'm not gonna do the math. Or maybe so, add some on. I don't think I don't think uh, NFL front office is like that four nine at all. Um, yeah, and I think that's why the dude fell as far as he did. Um, even and he's though six three, two hundred and fifty seven pounds, like 
if you're an NFL player and you only weigh 257, you should be running better than a four a four nine. Right. Yeah. You should be fast like um the Watt brother on um Pittsburgh. on uh Pittsburgh. Um the other thing with Ashton Davis, just looking at his stats, uh he he's not a punt returner at all. Um he's only a kickoff returner. And kickoff returners in the NFL aren't really that not, no big a deal anymore. No. Um, but my, was so, he asked to do it though? The other question is, what he, was he asked to do it? Can he can he step in there and you know maybe push Barrios as another option? Yes, I don't know. He has two punt. He has two college punt returns total. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Hold on to that forty also, time too. Good. No, go ahead for an A. We'll go ahead. We'll speak about it during our next pick. Yeah. He he also um he also uh played quarterback for two full years. Right. So this is this is a guy who played five years of college football. He redshirted, and he he played corner for nine games as a freshman um and for 12 games as a, a sophomore um so this is a very versatile cat and uh i i like him now that i more know i, I know more about him but Same like here. brandon said i don't know if i like him you know as much with this pick as i would have liked somebody else and and that's my point like after reviewing this and and, and we're all talking here um i still would not have picked him you know, at at, at uh, pick number sixty eight, but I respect the pick, even though I would not have done it. If yep. you understand what I'm trying to say, yes, I respect totally. the pick because it seems like they did it from a plan. They had a plan of action, and it was a concerted effort to pick him. This guy can play corner, he can play slot, and he can play safety, and he can return. You know, I mean, I mean, oh my goodness, and. We already have the best defensive coordinator in the league in Greg Williams. Imagine him just playing, you know, a, a doctor and just put, placing him here and here and there. So there is definite value in having this kid. Um, I would not have done it, but now that it has been done, I highly respect it because I see what their philosophy is. Yeah, the other thing I want to point out is I, I respect your position, Kyle, about, you know, maybe drafting Chin after – you know, looking at it, you know, from like the last last week when we were t- discussing it, um, this guy was ranked higher than him, um, Ashton Davis, and I would not have been upset with if the Giants, if the, excuse me, if the Jets picked um, Chin at sixty eight, based on your discuss, based on our discussions about Chin. Mm-hmm. I think time will tell with, with something like that. I mean, I, I'm not the expert. The people on TV and uh, the general managers are the experts. So mm-hmm. uh, time time will tell with that. Yeah. Um, but um, I think that uh, I think that maybe one of the reasons that he was ranked lower was because he's not a pure safety. He's a hybrid player like Isaiah Simmons, and he's coming from a one double A school, which always just knocks you down just a smidge. Sure. You know, yeah. just a smidge. And his game reminds me of Derwin James. That's yeah. who he reminds me of, you know? Well, so Derwin so, James is, is the best comp for Isaiah Simmons, really. Right. Um, mm. In my opinion, too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, fellas, uh, let, let's press on to pick number 79. Pick number 79 is still the third round. Um, so we address safety. Um, as as the Jets uh, did, and um, we addressed as far as our mock draft, uh, the defensive end. And then when we go down to pick seventy nine, we as Team BKBK selected Lim Bo- uh, Bowden. He's a quarterback, wide receiver, and running back. But I think that we all were drafting him to be our wide receiver. Um, and then the Dret- the Jets drafted Jabari Zoniga, defensive end, Florida. And we were like, what? Who's this, this guy? Is, this is the only pick that I would have been like, no, I don't agree. Uh, it's hey, not the hey only Brian, one Brian, what's this 40 time? I, I, you, you, you've you been teasing that info. Uh, so he ran a 4-6-4, four, four, which was number two ranked 40 time for defensive linemen. Height That's and weight. A big, a big difference He's between a 4-9 and a 4-6. He's sticks. a big guy. <laughs> sure. Big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said height and weight? Yeah, if you have that available. No, but I'll, I think, I'll bring it up. I think Who's he's this? Six, Yeah, I think he's six four, maybe two fifty, something like that. 
Some, somewhere he's in that six realm. three, two sixty four. Zuniga is six three only. Okay, two sixty four. That's not bad to run that four. But six. what? But but what he what he does? What he did effectively were the cones. He he did he did like a cone drill that was similar to in terms of his time that was similar to a, a running back. Mm. So Kyle, do, do you have the uh, depth chart you could bring up? Because um, what I liked about the depth chart is that it says what kind of technique the player would be in as well. Yeah. And I think that that would play very well with, with looking at him. So you kind of pull that up. And while you are, uh, listen, I, I didn't love the pick came out of left field. Nobody that we kind of took a look at. Um, when I saw him on tape, man, his, his first step was phenomenal. Quick. Was quick. Phenomenal. I mean, yeah. before, you know, it seemed like as soon as the ball was snapped, he was in the backfield that quickly and definitely putting, pressure on the offensive tackles and guards and stuff that he was going after. So, you know, I think that he would definitely be a, a good piece once I took a look at his tape from that perspective. But mm-hmm. again, when you're thinking about weapons, you know, you think about the third round, Bowden went one pick after this, you know, that right. was, that, that yes. was something that was like, Oh, it was a little tough uh, right. to, pill to swallow from that perspective uh, because of that fact. So um, I think he's going to end up being a, potentially a good player. Or again, could be a bust, another boom bust type of individual. Um, but if he can learn like a second move, pass rush move, the dude's gonna be dangerous. Let me let me point out something too. Can everybody see the? Um, yes, I, I, yeah, we can. That? Can you blow it up right, a little so, bit around his position though, Kyle? Like you were doing before. Look to well, the if right. We look at, if we look at the, if we look at the, if he comes in as as number two on the depth chart here behind Basham. Yep. He's also set in here as number two behind Jenkins here. Now, I foresee – I mean, you can't keep everybody on the field all the time, right? Right, you gotta, yeah. You got to spell people. So if you had if you had a, a second group of – you know, let's say you have Jenkins and Basham in the first group, and then you have a, a Luvu and, and – uh, and Zuniga in the second group. Wow, <laughs> that might that might be something right there. Right. Um. You're you're you, you, we might actually have a pass rush coming from those positions. Um. And you know the the other thing is here you have some athleticism here with Batakasi and Shepard. Um. And then you have the the just you know our mountain on defense with McClendon. Um. But then you have also Quinnen Williams on this D line, yep. who is going to you know. So you have run stoppers and you have dynamic players, quick um, twitch, dynamic players, quick, quick twitch, quick twitch, yes, yeah. So um, and you know you, you could have our three, you know the the linebackers that we want, um, and starting the ones that are healthy behind them. You know, yeah. with a Williamson and uh, a Mosley, and then I mean, even like like Kerry was saying, even our depth, like Patrick Onawastor, uh, Hewitt, Cashman. These are dudes that play football. These are yeah. dudes that have played football in other places. Um, so um, this actually, this actually, this Zuniga pick could work out really well now. Was it the guy that we wanted? Was it the best guy to be picked at that time? Now, what we wanted didn't go until the fifth round. So maybe we were wrong about that. Maybe we were, right. Yep. Um, maybe we were wrong about that. We kind of we kind of mocked ourselves out, I think, in a lot of ways. Like I know for, for myself, for instance, I did a lot of mocks. And sometimes, I, you know, I even like changed up my mocks just to see what would happen. Or did them in different ways. You know, you fall in love with guys yeah. when you keep picking them over and over again. Um, so, and I think Carrie, Carrie picked Bradley and A in a mock maybe five hundred times. Yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> me too. You try to get him at no. It was five hundred and seven. Let's be clear, it's five hundred and seven <laughs> times. Okay, you know, don't shortchange me. I don't appreciate it. Okay. But but here's here's the thing too. You know, if you don't pick this guy who you want. At 79, and you pick Lynn Bolden, then you got to wait until 
either 101, which we traded out of, right? Or stay put and get somebody at 120. And understanding, it's, understanding that um, Zariga in the mock draft that we did ended up going number 78. Right. So, right. So, so my point is that you don't have another player at the edge, outside linebacker, defensive line, outside, uh, th- three, four package that projects that wouldn't have been already scooped up at 120. Yeah. All right. And again, I'm not defending our general manager, who I love, by the way. Right. I'm just putting out the facts, you know. Can, can we be fair to Zaniga, too? All uh-huh. right. The, the guy's name is Jabari Zaniga. His name isn't Jakai Polite. Oh, I don't care about that. I, I know. And I, and I understand what you're saying about that. He's, yeah, I know, but that's the, the similarities. It's, sometimes in that. it's a hard pill. Yeah. Sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow. I did project that. I am guilty of that. I projected that in the moment when we first got him. You know, so, in our right, because you, you get so emotional and sensitive. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know <what? laughs> I do you get do. emotional. You do. I do. Oh, oh my God. God. Is, <laughs> I'm so done. Oh, yeah. Carl Thomas, yeah. huh? Carl Thomas, yeah. is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. I'm so emotional. Yeah. <laughs> he called me Carl <laughs> Carl Thomas. <laughs> Carl Thomas. That's hot. I worked secu- I worked security for Carl Thomas once. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. I worked on his I worked on one of his videos, one of his music videos. It was him and Sheik Luch. They had a oh, song gosh. together. Oh, oh man. And yeah. Carl Thomas was sipping on that stuff, staggering out of the trailer, but whatever. Easy, easy, easy. Easy. <laughs> Scissor. Scissor. Here's the one thing about Zaniga that that um I, I read. Um uh he is used to putting his hands in the dirt three point stance. I want to hopefully, and listen, he's an athlete, so I, I'm not going to doubt him initially, but hopefully he can also rush the passer from a two point stance as far as uh, standing up, you know, and then hopefully he can stay healthy. And if that's the case, he can rush from a three point stance, two point stance and remain healthy. I have confidence that he can be productive. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, like if we look at that Lynn Bowden, um, that Lynn Bowden pick. Where does Lynn Bowden go? Yes. Uh, right. We pick him there based right. on this thing here. So you're looking at the Crowder Berrios, Berrios um, depth chart there. Um, the X uh, part of our depth char- chart, if you swing over, you look at the, the Z part, you have um, you have Mims and Smith. And, and I think that you'd have to kind of... You have to cut somebody. Yeah, you'd kind of have to need... Um, Lynn Bowden to be a Z or a Y, a Z or an X, um, because otherwise you're not really going to get them, or you're going to be scheming to have right. two you're slots on the field. Packages, correct? Yeah. Yes. When you when, yes. when you already when you already well, have um, when you already have uh, uh, Le'Veon Bell that you can do that with. So yeah, it it, it kind of would have been a like like. Brian has been saying all along, it kind of would have been like a, a, a pick, a weapon pick when you need a receiver. Um, yeah. He's basically I think that's the, positionless. You know, well, I think that, I think no, that, police, I mean, he, go ahead. I'm sorry. Positionless, positionless football is the, is the wave of the future in the NFL. And we're seeing it a lot with this draft, but um, he, he doesn't, we needed, if, if we, I think we can all agree that, the thing that we didn't get out of this draft is one more receiver that w- we would have wanted to be in this depth chart. Well, he would have taken over Burials at the end of the day. He would have been behind Crowder. Uh, right. And that's where right. he would have ended up being. And is he an improvement on that position? I think so. Um, man, I think that he's more gadgety. You can put him in the backfield, um, you know, Wildcat uh, quarterback as well. So you have a couple of different things that you could do with him that you can't necessarily do with Berrios. He doesn't offer the return game, I don't think. So maybe that's one of the pieces of the puzzle that was a difference maker for the Jets. But um, I think that he would have definitely slotted right in there. But now, again, you're making an edge versus, you know, weapon decision in the second pick of the third round. And obviously they, they went edge because there was probably not a lot of quality after that. To carry and, and and what it does is it gives you depth 
on the edge, which we didn't have. Yeah, we had right. depth in we had depth in the middle because um, we 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 demonstrated that by by re-signing guys that you know might have been off the scrap heap, right? Um, and again, to your point, if you if you draft Lynn Bowden, then you know what do you do? Where, where does he slot in as the you know the, the slot receiver, the Z? You know, you we you know we we say. Um, positionless, I call it versatility. Right? He's a he's a Tyreek Hill type. He but Tyreek Hill is on the field all of the time. He's not, you know, you don't just throw him on in a package. You you find ways to keep him on the field. He's a wide receiver that has positionless skill has a positionless skill set. No, no, no he's a wide he's a wide receiver that you have a that you build a a an offense that can create for him regardless of where he lines up true true yes okay. I, you know what yes yes you're 100 percent right all right so so my so my criticism of the pick is yeah i would i wanted i wanted limbo then but what, what the pick does is it provides depth and versatility at a position where we did not have it yep so guys let, let's keep this thing moving all righty so remember during the course of the draft we had made some acquisitions that uh, gave us three picks in the third round. But then as we got closer to the end, we ended up trading down and we traded one of our third round picks. I believe it was the, uh, the 101st pick that we had acquired through a deal. Mm -hmm. And then we traded down, which thus gave us four, uh, three picks in the fourth round. There were picks 120, picks 125, and picks 129. Right. We already That's had 120, though. That's correct. Right. Yes. So it, it gave us three. Um, and before you uh, before you move on, though, B. Go ahead. You know who we did that trade with? Uh, the New Pats. England. New England. That's I what know. I. That's what I love. Right. Yeah. I first, love the first trade with them in ten years. I think ten years. Right. I mean, you know, yeah. JD going out there making trades out the Patriots, the Giants. I don't care who we're making trades with at this point in time, as long as they're going to make our team better. So as long as it's advantage, you know, advantageous to us, yeah. please. I don't care. Exactly. I, and we, and we got a 2021 six rounder. Yes, we do. Yeah. So go ahead. You know, that's something that maybe we can kind of dangle and trade somewhere and end up getting somebody that makes a difference. So I love that too. Sure. I, I had no reservations about that whatsoever, especially once I heard it, I was like, good, give me more. Let's go. Call them back up. Let's make sure this is advantageous to us. So now um, we're in the fourth round. And uh, pick 120, which was originally ours and stayed ours, of course. And Team BKBK, we drafted a running back with pick 120. Anthony McFarland, he's personally one of my favorites. And I think I was selling this guy so super hard. And you guys ended up saying, like, all right, he makes a good point. This kid is electric. You know, and then we ended up agreeing that uh, we needed a running back, someone to kind of offset and to give um, Le'Veon Bell a breather who can create some dynamic, dynamic stuff on his own. Um, Anthony, McFar Anthony McFarlane is a running back, an electric running back out of the University of Maryland. And that's who Team BK picked. Uh, with uh, the, 20, the 120th pick, the uh, New York Jets drafted instead. LaMichael Perrine, running back out of Florida. Um, so let's talk about that. McFarland basically versus Perrine out of Florida. We're going to Florida I think, a lot. I huh? think the pronunciation is Perrine. Perrine, yeah. really? It's Perrine, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I, have, I have a couple. I, I know a couple of people that have that last name, and that's how they pronounce it. So. Gotcha. Thank you for that um, correction. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's please. Thank you. Thanks for the correction. I truly meant it. So, I mean, honestly, um, I think here's the thing that 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 goes against uh, Anthony McFarland. It's the fact that he's not that great of a pass blocker, you know, and we pass so much now in this league. You're going to need your running back at a whim's notice to stay in and to pick up that blitzing linebacker or to chip block on that edge, you know. Uh, and, and, and help to tackle out, you know, or maybe, you know, smash into someone and then release and then go out there and catch like a quick uh, pass in the flat or set up a screen or something like that. And he's an electric player, um, Anthony McFarland, but he's not known for his blocking 
whereas Perrine isn't as electric. He does everything well, but nothing great. And that's what I saw in one of his write-ups. Everything well, but say nothing great. And I think McFarlane is a great runner, but he's not like as, say, buff as uh, P. Ryan. Is that what you said, P. Ryan? Is that how I pronounce it? <laughs> right? P. Ryan. Yes, it's fine. P. Ryan, you know? So, honestly, I still prefer McFarlane, but I see where they were going for safety's sake with P. Ryan. And you guys can kind of take it away from there and let me know what you think. I wanted to get back to what you know what this common theme to me is that um round one they pick a tackle we pick a tackle round two they pick a a receiver we pick a receiver um round three um we pick a d end and a and a receiver uh they pick a safety and a d end so we're not really that far off there um and then round four uh the jets pick a running back and we pick a running back. So alignment as far as what should be picked when is kind of, you know, 90% there. Um, And it's just a a matter of, you know, which type of back you like better. Um, And I think that McFarlane would have been a good pick here. Um, I I think, I think we were, we were spot on with that. Um, However, they might like P. Ryan as a pass blocker, like you said. Um, they said that he actually the, likes to pass block too. I read. That's I heard that Daniel yes. Daniel Jeremiah said that on the thing. It's like the guy loves the pass block better than any, more so than anybody any running back in the draft. So mm-hmm. maybe that's the thing he's great at. And if you remember correctly, when Ezekiel Elliott came out, and this is one of the reasons why I like J.K. Dobbins so much because I think that he was a, a an Ezekiel Elliott type of back. Um, one of his best traits was not you know, the running, but the pass blocking, how, how good in the pass game he was. And that's something that a lot of the college running backs don't have coming out. So I think that's a, a major upside thing. And um, I think the other, the other thing about it in picking him, and again, you know, I totally agree with you, it's about – they picked the running back. We wanted a running back. They picked the running back who they liked, and we picked the running back that we liked. And I like, I like his tool set um, in terms of you know running in between the tackles, um, taking um, contact, and he wants to punish you. And he's a he's a different runner than Le'Veon Bell. And and like I was saying in terms of when we when I was talking about you know drafting AJ Dillon. You got to have a change of pace type yep. of back um, yeah. for what you want to accomplish um, with this offensive line. You know, you want to punish guys. This guy is trying to punish you. Yeah, he was. Uh, th- and he catches out of the backfield. Yeah, to, to that yeah. point, he was third on the Florida Gators in receptions. Uh, he had 40 receptions for 262 yards with five touchdowns. He was right behind uh, Vance Jefferson, Nothing. who had five, 49 receptions. Yeah, who got drafted in the second round, who, who had 657 yards and six touchdowns. Um, when you right. looked at his stats overall, it was you had to look at him in, in totality, not necessarily just the rushing. Obviously, if you're averaging five yards a carry, you just need more carries at the end of the day. But he was three years. He was close to a thousand all purpose yards. So, so Brian, just just to jump on what you're saying there. I looked at his stats across the SEC. And mm-hmm. how he ranked up against everybody else there. Yep. So he had the ninth most plays from scrimmage mm-hmm. in the SEC. And that was the only category that he was top 10 in. Mm. Um, and the, and looking at that, I, you know, to, to have the most touches and still be a 5.5 average, um, you know, or, or high end touches. I mean, now, Lynn Bowden kind of well, well, kind of destroyed the SEC. In when you say plays, though, you just mean I was out there on the field, not necessarily that I touches. The rock, yeah, not right? necessarily touches. Right. Yeah. So, so, so then, then he was trusted. You're talking about the, you're talking about a three down running back there. If he's going to be out there, yeah. ninth most touches. So they trust him all three downs. Um, obviously in pass protection, like you already mentioned, and whatever yeah. scenario you want to put him in, run the rock. Um, catch it out of the backfield, block for me. He could do all three. 
Yeah, I think that um, the SEC stats kind of point to what Brandon's saying. Good at a lot of things, not great at any. So it doesn't jump out at you statistically, perhaps, how good this guy is, like you said, in totality. Right. Um, so, right. and th- this is not this is not a, as uh, surprising a pick to me as the Zaniga one was, because uh, I have mocked uh, P. Ryan to the Jets in, in mock drafts. Yes, you have. He's and a, I, I'm, yeah. I'm a witness to that. Yeah. So he, he is, he, he is one of the top running backs. And let me ask you this question though. You know, we originally picked Anthony McFarlane with one fourth round pick and then rocked on to five. All right. What Joe Douglas did was picked uh, LaMichael P Ryan with one fourth round pick and turned it into two more that we didn't have. All right. Um, so, you know, so, from from that from that third pick, that 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 third third round pick that we originally had. So there's a little wheeling and dealing here doing here. Yeah. These other you know, two it, picks weren't there. So they're kind of icing on the cake in a lot of ways. And and in an in an effort to, you know, just kind of move along because we don't have all day, but we want to be as thorough as we can, um, as far as like generating those uh three picks, right? In in the in the fourth round that you were just talking about, Kyle. Our next pick, which is uh the one hundred twenty fifth. Um, some controversy here now, and I know that we have some people who don't necessarily agree, but we have uh, with the 125th pick, James Morgan. When I say we, I mean the Jets. They drafted James Morgan, quarterback out of Florida International. What What are your thoughts about that? Because I know that we as a team, the New York Jets, they definitely needed a quality backup quarterback to Sam Darnold. Let, let me address that. Go ahead, before I, but before I do, I, I want to say that, um, yes. Um, for P. Ryan does not do a one thing great, but what he does do is everything well. Yes. And that's about versatility, right? Yep. So, again, the, the common theme of this, of this draft is versatility and depth. So, in terms of the picks that we received additional to, you know, number 120, 125, 129, I'll address 125. I said probably three or four times that this team is going to pick a quarterback some at some point yep. in this draft for the purpose of depth. Again, when we did not have a backup quarterback, oh. what happened? Oh. We fell off the face of the earth. We became irrelevant. We have an opportunity. We had an opportunity to draft a quarterback that is a captain that is mature, that has a cannon for a gun cannon. Or, or an arm cannon. <laughs> right, um, that we can develop and 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 add an additional veteran quarterback um, to this roster to bring him on with um, Donald. And in the event that I hope does not happen, that Donald does not develop the way we want him to, we have an opportunity to develop another quarterback. Well, I don't want that. I don't want that to happen. I will emotional, have trust in mine. Your emotional co- co-host, I I can't even think of that. So I'm gonna let you finish. But I, I I'm, <laughs> I'm just I'm, saying. I'm, I'm gonna go I'm like just, this again. Actually, again. like this. <laughs> you right, right. You you hope for the best. You prepare for the worst. Right. You know that has to be you know a part of the approach. No, do I want that to happen? I don't want that to happen. You know, obviously, but we're not the only team that picked up a quarterback that has a preeminent quarterback at. The starting position already. Different ages, though. Um, what did Philadelphia do? Well, I guess I mean, I guess Philadelphia is a better comp. Yeah, I'm. Th- I was thinking Green Bay when you said that. I, I wasn't. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I don't like that. I don't like that. That um, that Green that Bay pickup. Pick, right? That pickup. I don't. And, and it's only because of where he was drafted and how many years are on that contract. And you have an emotional quarterback. As well as an emotional co-host, because because uh, that <laughs> because Aaron Rodgers is as emotional as they come. Sure, and you didn't, you and, you didn't get, and you and you did not give Aaron Rodgers weapons. Weapons. Yeah, you had uh. an opportunity to pick a wide receiver right there, baby, and you didn't do mm-hmm. that. Man, trade it up for the kid too. Well, they didn't. They didn't pick a wide receiver in the entire draft. In the entire wow. draft. Wow. Wow. Okay, but but we're not going to talk, yeah, 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 talk about this. Yeah, about We're going to talk about us. Yeah, so take it away. Cool. So, so yeah. here's the question. Do you think that picking James Morgan 
Uh, Because we had three picks in the fourth round held us back from doing other things that were needed. Yes. In what way? Exhibit A, please. Uh, So, again, wide receiver. You had Antonio Gandy-Golden that you could have selected um, that went number 142 later on in the fourth round. And where would he have picked? Where would he have um, slotted in here? 125 or 129. Yeah, so, right. So, any of those picks. So, where would you slot on our – I mean, listen, I, I don't think we, – we look at the our depth chart as far as wide receivers is concerned. I mean, we're not talking about all pros in any of those slots. So, I mean, you know, these these are positions and people that, you know, players that we kind of like. But Doxon was a washout from Washington. I mean, we're not talking about, you know, somebody we traded for and that we signed to some lucrative contract here. So, I would have brought him in and said, listen, fight for a position. But the dude is like 6'4", runs a 4'6", you know, his hands are, are sticky like glue. So why not draft somebody like that? You don't know what's going to end up happening with Mims. You love him. But, you know, when you try to hedge your bet, somebody that hasn't been out there on an NFL roster, who hasn't washed out before, um, who hasn't come in as an un, undrafted rookie free agent, right, who's trying to fight for it, put him out there and see what ends up happening. That's all. I, I think that that would, that would have been it. I'm not saying don't draft a quarterback. I would have been drafting yeah. a quarterback too. So we're not talking about draft a quarterback or not. To, to Kyle's win. point, it's just win. win. It's just win. Yeah, just I, win. Definitely, just win. Yep. That, that's what we're talking about. So yep. I just, him, maybe you could have waited on. And maybe they were thinking maybe you couldn't have. I, I, don't, I don't really know. But you had um, Fromm, who ended up going later on in the draft too. You could have potentially picked him up. Um, but his it's arm about how you liked him. I, I, don't, I don't think that's potentially such a great pick. Um, from, from? Um, yeah. Didn't you love I, it though? Didn't you say he was gonna be like the Patriots picking up from, and then you know, like, didn't no, you say no, that? I, that 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 was me being ironic, um, like mm. in a Tom Brady way. Mm. Um, I, I I I wasn't. I don't know, that Kyle. Wasn't me, that you wasn't did... me being alone. <laughs> yeah, if you hated the the guy, I don't think you would have said that. You know, I, I think you. Would... I don't. No, 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 no. I don't hate. I I don't hate the guy. <laughs> I don't hate the guy. <laughs> I'm gonna have. First of all, first of all, I speak badly about a U Dub quarterback, and I'm gonna have a, a million people outside my door. Oh, in, gee, um, you, you don't know, want five that. Five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> they're um, all gonna have the daggone virus outside your door too. <laughs> oh no. No, I don't. I I don't. I don't um, jokes, I don't dislike yeah. from uh, uh, not from I'm talking about uh, oh, we are talking about from not Easton I'm sorry um, yeah. I don't I don't dislike I don't dislike from the the thing that for me is that there's a huge drop off in the quality of quarterbacks oh. after uh, those first few you know the, the Tua Herbert Love um, yeah. then it goes it goes, it goes, it's, it's a, it's a big drop off to me. Um, a lot of mocks had us drafting Jake Luton from Oregon state as our, um, potential, you know, backup developmental guy. Um, and from all the rumors, the QB coach for, uh, Greg Williams son was at the East West game or whatever all-star game, James Morgan, like Mm -hmm. destroyed. He right. like totally ripped it apart. He's the best player there, they said. Um, and I think that might be the connection here. It's about and, scouting, scouting. And, and why don't you know? Maybe if we take it a step further, maybe they make the trade for the extra picks, so they feel all right picking him here. Um, that, I think that's a way to look at this too. Like if they had the original picks that they had, they wouldn't have been able to get them and. They uh, didn't have to pick him as high, uh, you know, as as uh, they may have had to. To, um, to your point, so, let, me, let me step in for a second. You mentioned the East West game, so um, he had the strongest arm out of any quarterback there. Morgan went nine of fourteen passing for one hundred and fourteen yards and a touchdown during three drives that he played. Yeah. So, he, and and he, and if it was a priority for them to to choose a wide receiver there, then, you know, why not pick him at 129? I mean, Antonio Golden, whatever his name is, Mr. <laughs> Rubik's Cube, um, you know, didn't go until later in the round, after the 129. So, again, it, it wasn't as much of a priority for them to do that. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I thought that we should have walked away with at least two wide receivers 
out of this draft. Agreed. So there is some disappointment there. I agree with you. Um, you know, th- th- there's disappointment there. And listen, we already got Mims uh, valued as a first rounder, you know, and I would have been happy, satisfied with having uh, whatever that guy's name is, uh, receiver out of Liberty, uh, Gandhi, you yeah, know. So, mm-hmm. you know, but anyway, listen, guys, let's move forward. Our last pick that we got in the fourth round. This surprised me. Once I read up on him, this guy is pretty good, man. And they're, 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 they're saying that he has the ability to start within like two years. And this guy's name is Cameron Clark, offensive tackle out of UNC Charlotte. He played with another UNC guy that I really wanted on this team as a pass rusher, Alex Highsmith. But whatever. What are you going to do? But um, he's six foot four, 308 pounds. And uh, on the tape, he had some of his best games against top notch opponents, i.e., against Clemson. Yeah. And he was mauling people when they played Clemson, even though, of course, they lost to Clemson. But he was mauling people. This is like top of the line, okay? Top of the line uh, 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 opponent. And he's out there just putting people on their back. And he's an aggressive style of player. And, you know, he's 6'4, so not your typical 6'5, 6'6 tackle. They're saying that he can play tackle. But also what might um, be best for him on the NFL level is to bring him inside and have him play guard. And they said that, you know, according to his, his, his stock, that he could probably play, not this year as far as play, I mean start, but probably next year. And I'll take that out of, you know, our last pick, say, sure. in the fourth round. I'll take that. Absolutely. Did you guys uh, did you guys hear that that he's Makai Becton's workout partner and they're like best friends now? Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Um, I did that. not hear yeah. that. Yeah. So that's awesome. So so now paint that picture for yourself. Um, he gets a year of learning how to play guard. You know, maybe from a McGovern or uh, you know, you know whoever is or, or Van Rotten, whatever. Uh, Van Roten, uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Van Roten. Um, and then all of a sudden you have for the next, you know, however many years, Clark and Becton, you know, best friends oh. next to each other at 308 and 370 or whatever right. it is that, um, that, that Becton is. Like that, who wouldn't want to play right next to their best friend? You know what I mean? Yeah. Who wouldn't? Yeah. Like that's awesome to me. I and, love it. And the best friend is oh, like 6'7 I mean, and 370 pounds too. I mean, I'd play next to that guy. Any day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. You take this one. I got the next one. <laughs> yeah, I may be, I, I may be amping up the best friend thing a little bit, um, but uh, but they are workout partners. That's so great, man. We all, we all know how that is, you know. Like you, uh, you have a relationship with somebody, and then you happen to get picked there. You kind of went through that whole process together, and now you look at you know possibly playing together for a long time. I, I think. Uh, I, I like that pick the more the more I think about it. Um, and the, the point that I want to make is, again, look at the depth chart, versatility and depth. This guy is in the left guard depth chart. He is in the right guard depth chart. Hmm. He is in the right tackle depth chart, right? So if you, yeah, again, if you look at this draft, it is about depth. It is about versatility. The things that we did not have last year yep. that caused us a minimum of four to five games. Minimum. You're right, Kerry. Like minimum, without a doubt. So I would, love, I would love that guy to be the left tackle. Excuse me, the right, the right guard. Excuse me, the left guard and Beckham to be the left tackle. Could you imagine? Oh, my God. Like, come on. <laughs> Can we think come of on. the Cowboys? <laughs> yeah. Cowboys. Yo. Yeah. All right. Yo. So, so in round in round five, yes. the guy that we picked. Um, Go ahead, talk about it. Kyle. Let's, talk, let's about talk about it. it. Let's <laughs> talk about it. Let's talk about the 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 Nigerian. Um, you know, from the cachet of Nigerian players that. Well, um, for you, he's loves. a Nigerian nightmare. So just oh, call him a Koye if you want. Ay, put a pun. Ay, put a pun on it. Another dad Ooh. joke on it. <laughs> yeah, there, there's there, there's not going to be any nightmares until he actually plays well in the NFL. So um, I'll, I'll I'll reserve all comments till then. Um, he, did go, he did go way higher than we thought he would. Seventy-seven. Um, yeah, so he wasn't there for us to pick. But then we go and we pick Bryce Hall out of Virginia, who you know I didn't really know his full story um, 
pre-draft, like, you know, how good he was his junior year and how injured he was his senior year. But his past breakup numbers for um, his junior year led all Division One FBS and, and FCS um, yep. defensive backs. 2018, yeah. Yep. So, he, he, he was highly, highly touted before this ankle injury. Um, he's got great height. He's six foot one. Um, his 40 could have been a little faster, but he's a really, really, really good zone cornerback. And listen, they're saying that if his ankle is healed up, he could, he's got the skill set to be a starter, like a bona fide starter and to get him in the fifth round. Yeah. And I they, mean, yeah. they said That's last awesome. year, if he came out, he was probably going to go in the second round. And mm. to give you an idea of where he was drafted in the mock draft that we did, he went number 85 gotcha. in, the, in the mock draft that we did. So just and this right here is 158. And right. so, Kyle, and you were talking about starters and potentially getting starters out of this draft. And one of the issues that maybe you had with it, because uh, pick number one in the first round, well, the, the pick in the first round, pick in the second round, potential starters. Other than that, you didn't feel that way. I feel like we have rotational folks, right? Um, Zaniga being one of them. That maybe I'm yeah. not in there on the first play of the game, but on third down I come in, um, packages and stuff like that, definitely there. And when you're looking at Bryce Hall, he could potentially, based on his experience on the outside, push for a starting job, right? He's got to earn it at the end of the day. You know, Bless Austin is, is out there. We don't know if he's actually going to be that guy. Um, Desir is there. But we don't, you know, it's good, but he's not, again, we don't have any all pros in the quarterback room right now, right? So I think it's going to throw it up in the air and see who ends up winning these roles. He could be. I kind of like, I, I kind of like the, the, you know, like what our dime defense looks like right now. If you could play Austin Davis with May and Adams at the same time and a pool on the field as well. You mean Bless um, Austin? Is think, that what you mean? Bless Austin? Bless Austin? You said Austin Davis. That's what I was. Uh, no, Austin Davis is the safety. Right. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so if, if, if he's a guy that, that you could do a lot of stuff with, as far as being like a, the backup nickel corner, um, as well as the safety and you can play a dime defense that has him may and Adams in it at the same time. And you could really kind of, you could blitz Adams. You can do all kinds of stuff with them. Um, and then you have serviceable corners, which, you know, we've had a good defense with serviceable corners. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of cool things that could happen here. But then, if you got this guy Bryce Hall um, and Bless Austin uh, kind of maturing into starters, um, you got something there. And then if we go out and we get Logan Ryan um, sure. or this guy Quincy Wilson that we got as our essential seventh round pick, um, who's a former second rounder. Um, that could be really good. The, the Colts have a really good roster right now. Um, so, and, and they have for a while um, to the point where we're getting some guys from them that are quality players. Um, and we've made a lot of trades with the Colts. Colts um, are another example of a really good front office and uh, yes. GM and, and just offensive or not offensive, but philosophy of acquiring players like the Ravens, the Colts, the Saints, Philly. You know, teams like organizations like that. And we need to I think we're trying to get ourselves to that point as well. And as we continue to examine this draft, I'm looking at us more in that way as well with the leadership of Joe Douglas. Who was the quarterback that the Colts drafted? Uh, um, oh, yeah. Um, Eason. Yeah, Tony it was Eason. Eason. It was Eason. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 his dad's name is Tony Eason Brandon, but it, it's not that Tony Eason. Oh, it's not no. that one? No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. No. I, 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 they, they, actually, they actually pointed that out on uh, the telecast. I, it I, reminds I, me, I, Kyle. I'm sorry to step on you. I think I may have said something wrong. Uh, Anthony McFarland is not Booger McFarland's son. 
Who so said that? You said that? I said it because I got that information from someone <laughs> they else. They don't even look alike. Like, where are you getting that from? I got <laughs> it from someone, <laughs> and I'm correcting the error. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You got to bet. You, you, you got to bet You could have let that bro. slide because I didn't even notice. Nobody heard that. that. Listen, you just drew attention right. to that nonsense. <laughs> you play the law of averages. I, I'm a quality <laughs> stuff. So, hey, I made a mistake. <laughs> and I, I, you know, but, let, uh, me say, let me say this about the Bryce Hall pick. Love it. He doesn't look like a booger. He looks more like a bat in a cave. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. You're going to interrupt me for that? You're killing me. Uh, you are killing oh, me. Oh, goodness gracious. But again, again goodness Bryce goodness. Hall, love it. Um, again, he, it, it might be the, the, similar to the pick of Bless in terms of getting a guy that was injured um, in the lower round that can contribute to your, to your ball club. And later, um, he... He provides depth at the position that we did not have depth at last year um, and has the potential of being a significant contributor this year and even next year, maybe becoming a starter. Um, my other thing is that I think he ends up projecting as someone that could transition to safety because of the way he plays. He plays downhill. He loves to hit and be at the point of attack. Mm -hmm. So, you know, love the pick. You know, I'll, I'll even go forward and, and talk about that round six pick of the punter. Go ahead. Let's um, go. You know, this, this is, a again, we picked a punter in the sixth round. Look, I don't – did we have somebody there that we liked, per se? Yes. Yes, um, we had Bradley and A. No, he uh, went at the end of the fifth. He went at the end of the fifth. Oh my right. bad, my bad. Right. Okay, we would have had to pick him at one fifty eight. I okay. would have rather, I would have rather had Bryce, Bryce Hall that, at that True. spot. True. Um, we had you could have um, picked. Uh, Will we had Ankrum. Yes, yeah, we had Ankrum who was already gone. I think Ankrum went two hundred and fifty. He did it two fifty. Oh, didn't want him in a one ninety one then. Or Kendall Coleman who was already gone. He did. He was spot. undrafted. Kendall Coleman was undrafted. And Willickies out of uh, Michigan State who we've been mocking a ton and who we all like we could have had him as well yeah but i want to i want to ex extol on the, the virtues of picking a punter Good. at at round six i don't have a problem with it look you know it's about it's about possession football you know when we have a defense then that can hold you and um stick you in a spot where we can then get the ball back you're talking about field position right yeah, field position. I'm sorry. But 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 how about this though? I mean, I understand what you're saying, but like if we'd already gotten that pass rusher or maybe that second receiver, I'd be more inclined to agree with you, Kerry. But in this instance, I thoroughly disagree with this pick. The kid's a great punter, he's an all American and everything. But like we had a uh, Willie. Where are you gonna put an edge? Eight. In this uh, depth chart in this depth chart, after we pick Zuni Zuniga, where are uh, you gonna put another edge? After we pick defensive lineman, we, what do you mean? Where am I going to put him? Where are you going to put him? Behind who? Well, you'd have to pull it up again. But man, I'll pick him in a second. I wanted two edges. Again, I wanted two where's edges. he going to? Where's he? Where is he? Go I understand you wanted two edges, but my yeah. point is not right now. And I did too. Don't get me wrong. Okay, I did too. But again, in looking at this depth chart, where are we going to put him right now? We can put him on the field, man. I know what you're saying. I just don't have <laughs> <laughs> on the field. Yeah. No, no. You know, I'm just saying, just like, throw him on there. I don't he have can play safety. Chart. Who cares? I don't have the depth chart in front of me to be able to recite no. it, um, or, you know, automatically. In, in in terms of the depth chart, um, you know, all of us having done the um, the manage the caps, um, we don't have a signed punter. Get Willis out uh, of here. Um, Get Willis out of here and put Willickies in there. Thank you. We don't we don't have a signed punter, so uh, we would need to um, we, we would need to sign one no matter what, um, and we need somebody that's good. Um, so I don't know, you know, sleeping on this pick, I don't like I, I don't dislike it as much as I did yesterday, yeah, reactionary wise. Yep. Um, because every time I tried to re-sign Lachlan Edwards, it was a million dollar proposition. Um, with uh, like an eight hundred thousand dollar cap hit, which would have been um, so, an increase for him because he was making six hundred thousand, just as an FYI. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, um, he's four years in the league, 
So he's gonna he's gonna garner um, minimums anyway yep. at some point. So but you, let's not he's act vest, like he's Lachlan vested. isn't good. Let's not act like Lachlan is not good. No, he was a very good punter. No, no, no. I well, believe yeah. he was a Pro Bowl. Well, he was. He this was, guy's gonna cost a lot less. Yeah, I hear you. And he was good. Lachlan was good at, at hang time per se, but you know he this guy is good at net punt average so he's punting it out of the gym right or the you know the field I, I saw i saw i saw a 67 yard punt in the air yes right it's a big gym right. B. yeah yeah and yeah. and you're talking about coffee corner as well oh, yeah. huh? that's a big gym, <laughs> that's a big gym. <laughs> all right i said gym you clown uh all right so you know listen he's kicking it out of the stadium all right does that, does that make more sense thank you it does right yeah yeah is it a dome or is it a gym <laughs> it's a, it's a he's gym hit, with he's a dome a, he's hitting a scoreboard he's yeah hitting a scoreboard in uh dallas every time i remember, also, that. I remember that he also kicks off yes he also kicks off so okay. he would handle our kickoff duties as well and I make a touchback every time yeah. okay so i believe that you're you're talking about a a huge cap savings and perhaps an upgrade. And I, I think that it was By just using a, a six round pick. Yeah. I, and I think it was a combination of things that led us to the punter being an issue is that as the third and fourth and fifth round picks, you know, developed and they weren't the guys that we wanted them to be. It was just the sixth round pick being a punter was just the cherry on the top. You know, I think uh-huh. that's kind of how it ended up playing itself out, just at least in my opinion. Um, but again, it, it's it plays out like the mock draft plays out. The first and second round, we were lockstep. As it got to the third and fourth and fifth amongst ourselves, we couldn't find any consensus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. No, right? No. So it right. got a little frayed at the end, and I think that's the same way it ended up happening as we watched the actual draft play itself out. But I think I think yeah. the, I think the, the the tenor of the whole of the whole day was, you know, we want this guy, we want this guy. Oh man, why did they do that? And then we went to bed. And then we were like, you know what? Ooh, that's not that's not that bad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You, as we start reading, we getting emotional you know, like, like crazy. I was like, y'all need to right. chill. We getting emotional. <laughs> like crazy. Yeah. Brandon, you got a bat in the cage? Uh, uh, no, no. I'm sorry. There's, There's nothing not hanging upside down in my cage. <laughs> <laughs> Couple boulders right, in there. No. Nah, by the way, I love that expression. I love it. <laughs> it's so, listen, so, guys, so subtle. Listen, and, and, and just the last thing, we traded our 211th pick to the Colts for um, uh, their second-round pick from back in 2017, a cornerback named Quincy Wilson. And, you know, we're going to vet him and check him out, and hopefully uh, he is still of that caliber. And then we've got a gem, and uh, that means our, 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 our backfield as far as our DBs, man, whew, might, be, might be halfway decent. And you know what oh, I've noticed? Competition. competition. A lot of these guys are like six feet and up, like between six feet and six uh, two. Uh, between Wilson, I think he's six one. Bryce Hall is six one. Desir is six feet or six one. Um, uh, Bless is six two. So I'm loving these tall, nimble, sturdy guys running around out there, being able to guard the slot, the little slot guys, as well as your taller possession receivers. So. They're really approaching this from a cerebral aspect, and I really love it. Yeah, you walk it back from 191, captain, Bryce Hall, captain, Cam mm-hmm. Clark, captain. Nice. Um, P. Ryan, captain. You know, we, we got we got leadership in the building. I sure. love it, man. I love it. And listen, Keep guys, speaking of leadership, uh, we're going to lead our way out of this. This was a great show. We're so happy to be able to present this for everyone and to really break it down and give you the nuts and bolts of the matter. Personally, I think overall the Jets, if I had to give the Jets draft a grade um, at this point, especially with us, and my mind has changed through our, through our um, analysis right now, I'm going to give the Jets draft, I'm going to give it a B plus because I'm seeing the vision. I'm going to give it a B plus. Um, what do you guys think before we close out? Yeah, I'd say B plus myself. Yep, I put it there. Cool, cool. What about you, Kyle? I'm somewhere. I'm somewhere in between a B and a B plus. Um, and it would just. It's really comes down to, like I said before, just um, flavor, uh, like like what I wanted as opposed to what they picked. Um, but I think that um, we addressed some things, and and maybe it would be an A if we had another receiver 
um, picked, right. um, or one of the guys I really love. <laughs> so I, I um, would say I would say I'm going to give it a B plus plus. Uh-oh. And that plus, and that plus, that second plus. We make it up grades here. You right. this. <laughs> right. That 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 plus, that second plus, is contingent upon what Zuniga does. Mm. Got I think it. this. I think Daph- this, this Daphne Daph- Zuniga. He's he's actually the brother of Daphne Zuniga from Spaceballs. She played Princess Vespa. <laughs> Don't emasculate this football player. Hey, <laughs> Kerry, finish your thought, Kerry. You're killing me right here. I know. <laughs> you interrupt me for that. Oh, really? I, I thought you were I'm done, a Spaceballs fan, too. <laughs> I'm Your Schwartz is as big fan. as mine, so keep going. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah, yeah so, 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 you know, so it's just basically if, if, if this, if Zuniga pans out, then I, I give this draft an A. Oh, wow. Wow. All right. Well, here we go. We've all given our respective grades. So basically, we're all more than satisfied with the Jets draft. I hope that uh, everything, you know, can just kind of progress according to how we have valued the draft. And hey, man, let's go, man. So hey, listen, guys and girls, thanks for watching another episode of the BKBK podcast. We want to be able to keep bringing you the latest news and viewpoints of where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. So keep watching. You can find us on Facebook on our BKBK Podcast fan page. Find us on Twitter on at BKBK Podcast, Instagram at BKBK Podcast, as well as on YouTube. Just type in BKBK Podcast, hit the like and the subscribe button to show the love. And if you can't watch us, you can just listen to us on iTunes. Go to bkbkpodcast.podomatic.com. That's it, guys and girls. Let's go Jets. Let's go Baldwin Bruins. We'll never forget about you guys. And let's go Team BK BK. Play that music, baby. Right. Ooh, we're out. <laughs>